Are you all ready for the word of God? Yeah. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Oh, praise. I saw someone like grab their Bible like, oh, no, I was missing. Praise God. I, we're going we're gonna to honor the Lord with our, with our tithes and offerings in a moment. But I was so blessed this past week. Uh, uh, you know, uh, one, of our, one of our friends, he, he pulled me aside, him and his family. He was with his wife. And, they, you know, when, when God is blessing you, tell everybody. If you, want a, if you want a little secret on how to receive greater blessings from the Lord, make sure you tell people about what the Lord has done in your life. If you tell, if you give your testimony to other people, the Lord will make sure that you have more things to tell them about. Amen? Didn't, the, didn't Jesus say, go and preach or go and tell? Amen? So I encourage you, just tell your testimony. Last week we heard how we overcome the devil with the word of our testimony in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? So go tell people about what the Lord is doing. And this one, this one young man, he came up to me and he said, Pastor, I need to tell you, last week, or actually he, he had just started coming to church, and he said, I started tithing. And when I started tithing, even that same week, I saw the blessings of God beyond what I was, beyond what I, I imagined. And then I saw God continue upon that. And he, he was just so thankful and so blessed. He said, he said, this stuff works. How many of you know that this stuff works? And he said, this stuff works. And I said, yes, it does work. Amen. Now, I want you to hear this word in Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 2 says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Now, the word of God is spoken. Many people can hear, but not everybody has an ear to hear. Not everybody can receive the revelation of the word of God. Everyone can hear with, in the natural, but it, you, have to re, you have to hear with your heart when it comes to the things of God. That's why some people will come here looking to judge every word that's spoken. Instead of putting, instead of judging the word, they rather judge what the person says or the one that's saying it or thinking of all the reasons why they should not believe instead of thinking about all the great things that will happen if they will believe. If you believe, all things are possible. The Word of God doesn't promise anything of unbelief other than that whatever you don't believe, you're definitely not going to have. That's why the Word of God always talks about the believer. We are supposed to be believers. And what do we believe? The word of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm a believer. Some people are, are, are still waiting for me as a pastor to somehow prove to them that what I'm speaking is, is, is truth. Don't put, don't try to judge me. Judge God's word. Put your faith, not in Kevin, put your faith in God's word. Because yes, I am a man, I might, things might change in my life, but God's word will never change. So we put our faith in the word of God. And if we put our faith in the word of God, we are supposed to believe it when we hear it. Don't doubt it. Don't reject it. Receive it in Jesus' name. When God's word comes, stop waiting for God to constantly prove himself for you to receive. The woman with the issue of blood, she said to herself, if I will touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She didn't need a whole sermon. She didn't need a bunch of people to convince her. She just chose to believe. And she acted on her belief, and she received her miracle. Now, I don't know about you, but I need God's miracles in my life. I need miracles. I need God to do things in my life that, that no man can do. I need God to show me his power and provision. I need God to show me his power and strength. I need God to show me his power and his faithfulness in blessings. I need it. So I'm not waiting for other people to convince me that God's word is real. I've already made my, my, my I've already settled that in my heart. I've already established my faith. My faith is in the power of God. My faith is in the word of God. Not in the word of human wisdom, but in the power of God. Amen. 
And that's where our faith needs to be, in the Word of God. Don't wait for other people to convince you. Just make it settled in your heart. If it's in the Word of God, I'm going to believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Say, tell your neighbor, I'm a believer. You have to be a believer. Amen. Amen. So this man, he heard the word of God when it talks about giving. He heard the word of God when it talks about tithes and offerings. He stepped out in faith, and guess what? He received. How many of you want to receive from the Lord? Amen. Amen. So if you want to receive from the Lord, put your faith in God. Step out in faith, and you shall receive. The scripture said that people heard, but they did not mix the word with faith. You got to mix the word with faith. Not just a hearer, but a believer. Someone that will hear it and someone that will do it. Someone who's expecting to see it in Jesus' name. It's kind of like the person who, who likes to cook. Maybe you like to make tortillas. You might go and you might have all the right ingredients. And you might mix it all up and you might, you know, you, you forget the spoon. You're one of those people that puts your hands in the dough and everything. And then you might roll it out all nice and beautiful. Everything's perfect. You got everything that you need to make great tortillas. But there's one thing that you lack, and that's a nice warm fire with a pan on it that you could put the tortilla on and cook it. It's just raw dough until you cook the, tor the tortilla, right? Well, that's the way our faith is. We might hear the word of God and God might show you his promises and he's speaking to you. It's like he's creating this expectation of a great meal that you're ready to eat. But, but without faith, you have no fire. Without faith, you have nothing to cook on. Amen. And that's what faith is. Faith is that fire. Faith is the, the one that makes what you are hoping for come about. Amen. That's why faith pleases God, because when you have faith in God, you are not only a hearer, but a doer and an expecter of the word of God. Amen. We have to expect the things from the Lord, not just be hearers, but be doers. Tell your neighbor, I'm a doer. Yes. Say, I did it. You got to be a doer of the word of God. The Bible says, believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And someone says, Pastor, can you pray for me so I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? And I ask, I'll ask them, have you ever laid hands on the sick? No. Well, how do you know that God hasn't already, you know, stirred your heart to believe him that way? Go lay hands on the sick. You know, the first, I think it was six people that my father prayed for, they all died. And just because he didn't see it right away, he, he kept believing. I wouldn't have wanted to been the seventh one, but he kept on laying hands on them. And the Lord started using them mightily in the area of healing. Amen? We got to be hearers and doers of the word of God. If you just hear it, and you might, you might even speak it, you might even, you might even laugh at all of Pastor Kevin Ortiz's jokes. None of that will do you any good. Well, maybe a little bit. But it's the hearer and the doer. Don't just be a hearer, be a doer. Amen? Amen? I thank God that we're not just hearers, we're doers. Amen. We don't just talk about it, we live it. We walk it out in Jesus' name. And guess what? We get to receive. How many want to receive? We get to receive everything that the Word of God says is ours. Amen? So go with me to Malachi chapter 3. And I want to read to you what the Word of God says. Say, I'm a hearer. I'm a doer. I did it. Amen. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will... I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Hallelujah. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear, for, bear, bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. 
Now, how many of you all want to be a delightful land? Where the world will look at you and say, man, I wish I was like them. Amen. How many of you would, know, would like to have the confidence and a peace knowing that whatever you set your hand to, whatever you invest your life, your finances, whatever you invest in, that God is protecting it? That God will rebuke the devourer for your sakes? Amen. You know, just like a farmer will sow a, a crop in a field, but then these, these bugs rise up and start eating up the seed or eating up the harvest, God says he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When you sow and you give into the kingdom of God, you're sowing, you're sowing seeds in the ground. There's a harvest on its way to you. But many times that harvest is rising up and a devourer comes in. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You had this opportunity to do some things financially and you invested in their life, but a devourer came and destroyed the harvest so that when it came back, it didn't come back the way that you were, you were believing God for. Some of you have, have invested your life in your, in your children and you want your children to rise up, but you do not see the harvest because the seeds that were sown, not only were, they weren't sown, but they weren't protected. You didn't have the blessings of God upon your life. But God says, if you, when you give your tithes and offerings, he will open up the windows of heaven. Not one window, not a little crack, but the windows of heaven. And the word of God says, will pour, that heaven will pour out a blessing. Now understand this, this blessing is so great that it takes many windows. Amen. One blessing coming down from heaven will be poured out upon you from many windows in heaven. And the word of God says that it's so great that you will not have room enough to receive it. Amen. It's a too great blessing. And God says that's available for you, that's available for me, it's available for everyone that's not just a hearer, but a doer of the word of God. Some people say, well, you shouldn't give, your, you shouldn't give that much to God. You shouldn't honor God with that. You should, you know, don't you know you and your family need that? Don't you know you need to pay your bills with that? Don't you know Visa, MasterCard, they need you to take care of that? You know, that you need to get rid of that debt or you need to pay that thing off. And all those things are valid. All those things are, 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 are important. But without the blessing of God, how are you going to get out of that debt? Without the blessing of God, how can you increase to another land and go to a place that you've never been before? Without the blessings of God, how are you going to prosper? There are many talented and there's many people that sacrifice that are homeless today. You can't tell me that education is the only secret. Thank God for education. Thank God for sacrifice. Thank God for all those things. But unless you got the Lord's blessing upon your life, you can only go so far. What's good, what good is it having money without purpose? Amen. What good, you know how I many people destroy their life because they have money but they have no purpose? How many people commit suicide that are will, very wealthy, but they have no love in their heart? No, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow. Amen. Amen. Some people say more money, more problems, not with my God. I got purpose with the, for what, what the Lord puts in my hand. And God says he will make all nations call you blessed. In the past, everyone that knew you from the old neighborhood, they will say, oh, that guy, he's a so-and-so, and they do this and this, and maybe has one curse after another curse after another curse. But the Lord's taking you to a new land. The Lord's taking you to a new place. The Lord's taking you to a new life where all nations will call you blessed. They will see your life. They will see your joy. They will see the peace that God has blessed you with. And they'll say, that's a blessed man. That's a blessed woman. You might not have everything in the physical that every person will say, oh, I wish I was like them. But your relationship with God, your relationship with your, your family, your relationship with your brothers and your sisters, I'm telling you, people are going to look at you and they're going to say, that person is blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And this is, all part, this is all a promise for those that are hearers and doers of the word. 
Everybody go like this. You got to mix the word of God with your faith. You got to mix it with your faith. Amen. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. Step out in the name of Jesus. Believe it in the name of Jesus. And put your expectation upon God. Don't put your expectation on man. Put your expectation on God. And watch how God will far outdo everything you even imagine. Amen. Amen. He's a good God. Amen. Amen. He's a, an excellent, amazing God. And you know, God loves to show off. Did you know that? God loves to show off. You know, he loves to show off because it brings him glory. Amen. It brings him glory. Every time the Lord shows off, he wants to show off his glory upon you. So people will see, oh, that's the son of God. Look what the Lord is doing for their life. Amen. God's going to give you a testimony. He's going to give you miracles. He's going to take you into blessed lands because you're a hearer and a doer of the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. I fail to, to meet a depressed Christian who loves God with all their heart. Someone who's following the ways of the Lord. You don't see them in the psychiatric ward. You don't see them broken and bruised and, and, and beat up. You know, yes, they might, they've gone through some stuff, but that stuff doesn't come upon them. I heard an amazing testimony about the presence of the Lord and how the Lord set this one woman free. She was, she was a, a woman that was raped, and she, she, uh, that, that person gave her diseases, but she got in the presence of the Lord, and the Spirit of God came upon her, and she just got lost with God during the service, and it was as if the Lord pulled it all out of her life, that when she got up, she remembered that someone had gone through that 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 issue but it was as if it was someone else the lord healed her not only did the lord heal her in her heart but the lord set her free that the doctors could no longer find those sicknesses in her body and today she serves the lord <laughs> preaching the gospel amen only god can do something like that only god could do something like that but this is part of a person that's following god that chooses to believe God's word in spite of what they see, choose to be a hearer and a doer. So many people are just hearers, and then they, they get angry, they don't see the things of God because you haven't done it. They didn't mix it with faith. I thank God that we are a faith pleases God church, that we hear and we do because we mix the word of God with faith, amen? amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Give God praise, amen. So let's go and honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Let's bless God. If you need a, an envelope to give your tithes and offerings, there's one in the front of your chair. We thank God for all your support. You all believe in the things that the Lord is doing through this ministry. You all are the ones that God is using to be supporters of this work. And I thank God for your obedience to the gospel. It's all about souls, and you've seen what we do there's no bait that we're not willing to go and get just so we can win the lost. Amen. We're going to chase after more souls than ever before. This year is going to be a year of a lot of work, but I believe it's going to be a year of great, great blessing. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm believing God for, for a great increase upon your life. I believe in God that God will continue to prosper your family, continue to prosper you, and everything that you touch will be blessed. Amen. But I know it's for the kingdom of God. I know that the Lord is going to use you to preach the gospel. Amen. So I encourage you guys to, to be a hearer and doer of the word and watch how, how great the Lord will bless you. Don't put any limits on God. If you believe in God that God is going to prosper you, maybe you're a businessman. Believe God that God will greatly prosper you. That doors of opportunity will be open everywhere that you go. That God will give you not just one business, but many businesses. Amen. And it's the Lord that will prosper those. God will give you creative ideas. He'll give you secrets. Do you know that God has secrets? He has secrets for you. You know, when it, when it came time for the disciples to, to pay for their taxes, Jesus had a secret for them. He said, go catch the fish. There's going to be a coin in, that mouth, in the mouth of the fish. And there was one coin so, pro, so valuable that it paid for all the taxes of all the disciples, including Jesus. Amen. 
So I encourage you guys to seek God's wisdom, seek God's guidance. God will give you wisdom. He'll give you understanding. Do not limit what God can do. Listen, you might not have been able to do certain things, but now you're not by yourself anymore. God is with you. Amen. So have faith that God can take you to that great land in Jesus' name. Amen. You ready to honor God? Stand up on your feet. Let's go and pray.